This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Angeles, we were working the night watch out of Administrative Vice Division. The boss is Captain Nelson. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Captain Nelson had received a call from the manager of a large downtown hotel. The manager, a Mr. Green, reported that a number of his guests had been heavy losers in a high-stakes poker game being run by professional gamblers. The card parlor was a Los Angeles residence. The victims, all strangers in town, had no idea where the house was located. $5,047,33.50. Comes to almost 20 grand. Probably a lot more the hotel manager didn't hear about. What kind of convention is it, Captain? Bunch of farm equipment dealers from the Middle West. Manager says they're money heavy. Get together once a year for a big celebration. Yeah, that farm equipment business is sure booming. Is that so? You guys priced a hay banner recently or a mechanical cotton picker? Well, I haven't. Cost you a fortune. Is that so? Checked it out last night. Where did you check it out? My seed catalogs. Get two or three every year about this time through the mail. The victims all describe the location the same way. Steep hill, narrow street, a lot of turns. Nobody's sure which direction or how far the house is from the hotel. Drove them around in circles, no doubt, going and coming. And they'd probably had a few. I'm surprised they remember as much as they do. What about the house itself, Skipper? Modern. One of those cantilever jobs. Sticks out over 500 feet of nothing. Hollywood Hills, maybe. More than likely. But I want to know. Find that game and sit in on it, and then bust it. And quick. Looks like we're delegates to a convention. Right. Figure out a cover story, then check into the hotel. It's packed, but the manager said he'd find you a room. He'll give you the proper credentials. We'll arrange a meet later. The taxpayers came up with this, gambling money, if you find any action. 3,000 bucks, and I want most of it back. Yes, sir. You mentioned some shills. That's the one thing the victims aren't complaining about. How many girls are they working? Several. They make their contacts in the hotel bar, different girls every night. One more thing. Gambling in a big city is like cancer. Yes, sir. Clap a lid on this thing before it spreads. <laughs> At 7.30 p.m., Bill and I, posing as prospective buyers of farm equipment, checked into the hotel. Our credentials would state that we were observers only at the dealer's convention. I hope you gentlemen have reservations. Yes, sir, we do. Ryan and Frazier, Porterville, California. Oh, yes, I was told to expect you. You're pre-registered gentleman in room 726. Thank you. I hope you won't be too uncomfortable. It's all we had left. Beg your pardon? Room 726, right next to the elevator shaft. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm Tom R. Bird, Connect, Missouri. You fellows farm for a living? Oh, a little bit. When we're not drinking whiskey or playing cards, I'm Bill Ryan. Pleased to meet you, Bill. This is my partner, Joe Fraser. Mr. Fraser? How are you? You a salesman, Tom? Yep. Thunder tractors. Finest machines ever built. Wouldn't have one on the place. Ah. You sure you're a farmer, Bill? You ever hear of California oranges? Sure. I invented them. <laughs> We came down here to look at some farm equipment. We'd like to talk to you a little later. Well, any time. I'll be in the bar. Sounds fine. Great. Thunder tractors. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Fresh fruit, my allergy. Oh, I didn't know about that one. Oh, sure. I get hives from just reading my seed catalogs. Do me a favor, will you, Joe? What's that? Just put it in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't dare touch it, you know. Well... It kind of tears our cover story, doesn't it? What do you mean? Well, a farmer who's allergic to fresh fruit. Just put it in the bathroom, will you, Joe? What was that, an earthquake? What was that? What was that? I dropped my toothbrush. That was the elevator, Joe, like the man told you. We're right next to the shaft. 
And that's the telephone, Joe. Bill Ryan. Yes, sir, got in a few minutes ago. It's Mr. Green, the hotel manager. Wants to know if he can come up. Anytime. Sure, anytime, Mr. Green. Right. Oh, by the way, we've got a basket of fruit in the bathroom. Right, my partner put it in there. As a rule, no. Yes, sir, appreciate it very much. What was that all about? Well, you know, Mr. Green sent that basket of fruit up to the room as a gift for you and I me. know, I know. I saw his card. Mm-hmm. He thinks you're kind of eccentric. Eight thirty p.m. Bill and I entered the hotel bar, where we hoped to make contact with a shill from the poker game. Good evening, gentlemen. Well, I thought we'd have to fight our way in here tonight. Yeah, where is everybody? Read your program. There's a big banquet upstairs. When did we eat last? Eat and we can do at home. Give me a double scotch on the rock, splash of water. Make it a pair, and the young lady, make her happy, too. Yes, sir. Boy, oh, boy. Easy, pal. You're a happily married man. You know that for a fact, too, Yes, don't I you know do? that for a fact. Yes, you know that for a fact. I got the greatest wife in the world. Wouldn't trade her for a million bucks. But that blonde's a pretty girl, too. She'll do. Reminds me of a gal I used to go with. Before you were married? Of course, before I was married. Margot the Magnificent. Heck of a good little actress. Blonde hair, green eyes, built like Theda Barra. We had a real thing going there. <laughs> what happened? Raided her theater one night, had to haul her in. I see. Yeah, she was a headliner, I was a cop. Too bad. Same old story, Joe. What's that? Career conflict. The gentleman next door. Thank you. Thank him. To the first friendly face we've seen in L.A. To Margot. You know, he gets worse if you pay any attention to him. <laughs> I'll remember that. I'm Dottie Taylor. Joe Fraser. Missouri, Kansas, or Arkansas? California. We raise orange juice. Aren't you at the wrong convention? Any convention will do, sweetheart, as long as it's out of town. Right, Joe? Yeah, at least one mile. Meet the brains of this outfit. Bill Ryan. Hi, Bill. Where in California? Porterville. Great place if you're an orange. I bet you've got quite a reputation there. Shrewd businessman, lousy poker player, married, but right now I'm not at home. Should we ditch this guy? I'll think about it. Bartender. Why so formal? Name's Harry. I'm Joe Harry. Buy the bar a drink. What are you celebrating? A smile. Twelve thirty a.m. If Dorothy Taylor was shilling for the poker game, she kept it a secret. The only action she claimed to know about was in the hotel bar. Come here. You want to go to Vegas? I was just going to say that a girl could get in trouble in here. Right, let's go someplace else. I know, wherever there's a card game. Or a crap table. I'm very big with dice, you know. Is that why you gamble, Joe? To feel big? You know, I never really thought about it. You're lying. I know. You guys are running me out of change. Haven't you ever seen a hundred dollar bill? Saw one about a year ago, but now two in one night. The orange business must be good. The orange business is lousy. Ask Tom here. He's right. See there, I told you. Told me what? You can be nice when you want to be. I think you're a phony, Ryan. That calls for an explanation, Mr. Arbird. You said that you and your partner were down here from Porterville to buy some equipment. Isn't that what you said? That's exactly what I said. But every time I start trying to talk equipment to you, you change the subject. That set me to thinking. Is that so? Yes, sir. And I don't believe a word of it. Now, wait a minute, Tom. It's all right, Harry. Let him sound off. Just what do you believe, Mr. Arbord? I'll tell you what I believe. You and your partner don't have any notion in this world of buying a tractor or anything else. You're down here to gamble and drink whiskey and chase women, period. Now, ain't that right? What do you think, partner? Well, you can't hit a man for telling the truth, can you? Of course I can't. I apologize, Tom. You're absolutely right. Spoken like a real gentleman. Now, I want to say something. Speak up. I'll buy a drink. And I'll drink it. And he'll help. On that friendly little note, I'll say good night. Well, what's your hurry? I go to work early. It's almost 1 o'clock. What do you do? You might like it, but you wouldn't understand it. So why talk about now, it? Now, with a statement like that, you expect me to let you go? Gamblers make lousy lovers, Joe. I may kill myself. Oh, please don't. You talk me out of it. I've had a ball, Joe, and thanks for the drink. Anytime. So long, farmer. So long, lady. Hey, where's she going? I don't know. She didn't say. Just when I was fixing to rescue her. Well, maybe she got wind of your plans. 
Sure looked nice when he got away there, Joe. Yeah, do you know her? Never saw her before. Come here. I want to ask you something, Harry. Let me guess. You're looking for action, right? Keep talking. You're going to ask me if I know where there's a poker game, high stakes, right? You just made yourself 20 bucks. Don't reach for it, pal. Why not? Because the answer is no, my friend. Is that so? Poker may be legal where you come from, but in L.A., it's against the law. Two ten a.m., the hotel bar was closed. Bill and I returned to our room. You really struck out there, didn't you? Oh, I don't know. I'm not so sure. What do you mean you're not so sure? She walked out on you, didn't she? Yeah, she did. You just can't admit defeat, can you, buddy? I guess I'll have to. Boy, she sure reminded me of Margot. Same hair, same eyes, same build. Yeah, I know. You told me. I wish we had a deck of cards. Why? I'm rusty, that's why. When was the last time you played poker? I mean, when you weren't on a case. In the Army, and that was a long time ago. That's what I figured. In my bag, right on top there. I don't know what you'd do without me. Poker, according to Hoyle. I must say, you think of everything. I try, Joe. I try. Yes, sir, she's probably the best lead we'll get. And you really struck out. Bill Ryan. Oh, hi, honey. Yeah, he's here. It's for you. Dottie? Why, no, the Queen of England. Hello. Yeah, lady. No, it's not too late for us. Yeah. In about five minutes, we'll be right down. Anything? We got the nod. We're invited to a game. a.m. Dorothy Taylor picked Bill and me up in front of the hotel. She said the reason she hadn't invited us to the game before is that it had to be cleared with her boss. We drove in a westerly direction from downtown L.A. 2.45 a.m. After a roundabout trip, we arrived at 702 South Dixieland Road up in the Hollywood Hills. Let me do that for you. Thanks. I'm the keeper of the key. House rules. Just trying to help. Don't worry. You helped. I did. You brought your money, didn't you? Not nearly as much as I plan to take away. Gamblers. Where's your lookout? Why? Well, it's customary, isn't it? It's a friendly little game in a private residence. Now, what do we need with a lookout? Tell them the rest of it. You were personally selected. Is that what you mean? That's what I mean. Boy, were you personally selected. The door lady. After you, gentlemen. That's what I love, the sound of a friendly little game. Go ahead, they're open. Well, aren't you going to wish me luck? I hope you lose your shirt. Well, thank you, lady. Well, if it ain't the gentleman farmers. Old home week. Yeah. You wanted Vegas? Here it is. Not bad. Booze, dice, poker, dames. I must be dreaming. For the philandering farmer, what more could you ask for? Privacy. Well, we guarantee that, too. No connection with the outside world. Not even the telephone. Now we'll get some action. Hiya, boys. How are you? Now, what can I build you? The usual? Well, here they are, the big butter and egg men. <laughs> Hello, Harry. Tom, drinking after hours doesn't improve your disposition a bit, does it? I keep trying. Good. Let me help you. Give us all around here, Harry, and one for yourself. Now, what do you think you're going to buy with that? Booze. Any objections? He means prices went up, pal, at 2 o'clock. Details. Anything you want. Three bucks a copy. You got any coffee around here? Follow me. Well, how do you like it so far? You should have told me I'd have brought some more loot. I did tell you. Sure, I get a phone call at 2 in the morning from a girl I've just met. She invites me to a big game. I fill my pockets with dough, walk out of my hotel, and somebody sticks a gun on my back. No, thanks. Inspirational. What is? The way you trust me. I'm disappointed. Why? You get a percentage. I should be so lucky. While the convention lasts, I got a job, period. I'm a wage slave, something you wouldn't understand. Don't bet on it. 
Who's the boss? Guy at the card table. And the game's straight, by the way, in case you're wondering. Well, I hope he's loaded. Don't worry, friend. You won't break him. I might surprise you. With no bread? How? With a little bread. Oh, I get it. Tomorrow night you make the big killing, right? That's it. You'll be scared to death. a.m. Bill's luck with the dice was only fair. A number of the players were losing heavily. There were no big winners. I took a seat at the poker table. The game was five card draw. The dealer who called himself Nate was informed by Dorothy that Bill and I were eager for more and bigger action the following evening. I began to win. On the fifth hand I discovered why. The cards were marked. Any more room in that cigar box of yours? Always. What color and how many? Oh, give me ten blues. There you are. Two hundred dollars. Thanks. Glad to oblige. Jack's a better gentleman. Who's got it? I'll go light. Twenty bucks. Joe? Let's kick it five more. Cost you twenty-five, Nebraska. What do you say? I'm plowed under. Kansas? How much power you got there, Joe? I am an A-bomb. Try me. Uh... 5.30 a.m. With daylight approaching, the action was suspended. We were asked to leave. How about some breakfast? I hope you can pick up the tab. What's the matter, champ? They clean you out? 500 bucks worth. Well, the firm's still solvent, isn't it? Uh, let's get some food. Thanks, but I'd rather sleep after I drop you two off at the hotel. Gentlemen, shall we say midnight tonight? Fine. Suits me. See you later. Nice fellow. Real lovable. Only I wouldn't want him mad at me. What's the matter? The gun bother you? You don't miss much, do you? We try not to. I'll tell you something maybe you don't know. What's that? He knows how to use it. 7 a.m., Captain Nelson came over to the hotel. We discussed plans for an early morning raid at the house on Dixieland Road. We'll be in position at 12.45 a.m. Now, when we get your signal... What is that? The elevator, Captain. Right next door. That's up. Wait till you hear down. They could have felt that in Tokyo. Now, where were we? The signal. Oh, yeah. Are you sure they don't use a lookout? No, sir. We didn't see any. The girl says no, and I believe her. She also told you that the games were straight. She thinks they are. Okay. Now, the signal. There's a surface entrance in the kitchen. I'll hit the porch light a couple of three times. Now, that's the best way for you to come in. They keep the front pretty well locked up. Good. Now, what's the story on the dice, Bill? They've been shaved. From the way they fall, I'd say about 40,000. Stiffs roll the flats, housemen the squares. And I'm with Joe. That girl doesn't know. OK, then. We're all set. I'll see you tonight. You know, I was just thinking. No, I guess not. What's that, Captain? I was going to wish you a good night's sleep. Midnight, we returned to the Hollywood Hills residence. 12.35 a.m., Nate Calvin, employing several different sets of marked cards, had relieved me of more than $1,000 that belonged to the taxpayers of Los Angeles. I'm curious, Joe. I'll bet you are. Another hundred. And I call. Ace high straight. Oh, you weren't kidding. But I'm standing short, huh? Afraid so. Four sixes. Something told me. I'm glad you aren't listening. <laughs> You're in a rut, Fraser. Yeah. Where you going? Coffee. Keep your seat. Harry will get it for you. Not going broke fast enough for you, is that it? Coffee's in the kitchen. I'll manage. You bet. How do you like that? Pitiful. I need a drink, Joe. I'll stick with coffee. Let me have one of those $3 specials of yours. Yes, sir. Shorty, I bet you don't farm any better than you roll those dice. I like to think so. And a pig's eye. What'd you say? Tell the truth, Ryan. You never have even been on a farm, have you? Is that what you think? Yeah. And something else. You gamble like I slop hogs. Ryan, just how do you make your living? Harry? Yes, sir. For two nights now, I've had a bug in my ear, and it's starting to bother me. Is that right? Yeah, and if somebody doesn't make it stop buzzing real quick-like, I'm going to pull it out and stomp on it. Is that clear? Hi, 
Joe. Hiya, lady. You miss me? I've been out rounding up customers. Bet you didn't know I was gone. You know, I was kind of hoping you weren't coming back. Well, thanks, pal. <laughs> now, you're a distracting influence. I am, huh? You are. Good. That's what they pay me for. I know. Dottie, Nate wants to see you. I'll be right out. Wait for me, huh? Sure. That's an old American invention called a porch light. Yeah, I know. I just figured that out. Nate's getting nervous. About what? You. Let him. Oh, come on, honey. You don't want to get me in trouble, do you? Well, do you? No. Twelve fifty-five a.m. Captain Nelson and the raiding party arrived. All right, everybody, police officers, stay right where you are. Don't move around and keep your hands in plain sight where we can see them. You're all under arrest. Now stay put. Don't move around. Hold your places. Hey, this is a private residence. We're entitled to play a little Sit side. back down in that chair. Come on, move. Rusty, keep those hands in plain sight where I can see them. You've got to be kidding. A real easy, Nate. I wonder how that got there. Maybe it came with a sport coat. Right on your feet. Uh, Ryan, you're a cop, too. That's right. I knew it. I knew it the first time I laid eyes on you, farmer, <laughs> in a pig's eye. Mr. Arbord. What? Shut up. Congratulations. That's one way to get your money back. That's not the only way, Nate. How about mine? You a taxpayer? Yeah, why? And you got money in here, too, along with about three million other people. Well, what do you know? I kissed a cop. I don't like cheaters, Joe. With or without a badge? Both. What about the guy you're working for? What do you mean? Take a look at these. The top four cards. Do you know what they are? Well, how would I? Ace of hearts. Ten of clubs. Jack of spades. Five of diamonds. Oh, how did you know? The floral design. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a series of dots. Look close. They're so tiny. Yeah, but big enough. Right, Nate? Real brainy, ain't I? Well, you're a big girl. It's my own fault. I saw dollar signs in front of my eyes instead of spots. You're not the only one. What'll they do to me, Joe? I wouldn't know. That's not my department. I hate it. I've always hated it. Then why didn't you get out? I tried. Believe me, Joe, I tried to get out. Well, you finally made it. just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On May 15th, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was found guilty of grand theft by trick or device and unauthorized possession of a deadly weapon which is punishable by imprisonment in the state prison for not less than one year, nor more than 10 years. Dorothy Taylor was found guilty of violating gambling laws, which is a misdemeanor, and was fined the sum of $40 and placed on probation for a period of one year. All others, including patrons of the gambling establishment, were found guilty of the same misdemeanor and were fined and placed on probation.